Marshall, Will, and Holly on the routine expedition. Met the greatest earthquake ever known. High on the rapids, it struck their tiny raft and plunged them down a thousand feet below. Where'd they go? To the land of the lost. Welcome back, fellow agents. It is I, your scientifically inclined and science fictionally inclined. Yeah, those aren't real words. Agent himself, X7, the host of Xenorama, the podcast of heroes and monsters. And of course, lots of dinosaurs. I think Grumpy and Alice both qualify as monsters because they truly were terrible lizards at this point in time. Be that as it may, um, we're going to talk about the 13th episode of Land of the Lost, Season 1, called Follow That Dinosaur. This was uh, written by Dick Morgan, and it was directed by... Come on, give me the credit here. I can tell you right now. Dennis Steinmetz. So we begin with the family about to wake up here. And unfortunately for Holly, So they get ready to swat Grumpy, but they didn't notice that he's busy chowing down on their grapes. And he just leaves. And I think Grumpy's getting tired of eating oversized toothpicks. What a thing to wake up to. I was having the nicest dream, too. Look, he's torn our curtain. Oh. Oh. Now what are we going to use to keep the flies out? Well, we're just going to have to hang it back up, that's all. I don't think so, Dad. Look, he's eating some of it. Eating some of it? Wait a minute. Grumpy's a meat eater. Well, somebody better tell him, Dad. I mean, he's just eating half our curtain. I think I know why, Dad. Why, Holly? Well, the curtain we hung up is made out of dinosaur nip. Dinosaur, dinosaur nip. nip? Well, that's what I call it. But why do you call it that? Well, the other day I saw Spot playing with it, and it reminded me of a cat playing with a catnip mouse. Well, maybe that explains why he's been so attentive towards us. Why? It's dinosaur nip season, well, Will. So you dope. <laughs> That's the only reason he's coming around, then. Why don't we pick it all up and throw it in the crevasse? Maybe old Grumpy will jump right in after it. Now we can all get some sleep. Holly. Well, no, no, that wasn't really the greatest idea I've thought of. Oh, no, I think that was a great idea. In fact, uh, we'll clear away all the dinosaur nip from around here, and then Grumpy won't bother us anymore. In fact, we'll start right after breakfast. Yeah, at least you let him eat. You and your big mouth. Well. <laughs> so I just, I love the interaction there, because Holly's like, well, we might as well, we have to go do it. And, so, and all three of them go do it, because apparently there's a ton of this stuff. Let's see. Let's go to the next part here. And they go down, and, you know, Rick's out there helping them. And they've gathered up a whole bunch. And then we get this exchange. Two. Oh, come on, it's too heavy. You'll hurt yourself. I can carry anything you can carry. Holly, you're a girl. Good observation. Girls can do anything boys can do. Have it your way. <laughs> <laughs> so these, these two batches of ferns, they don't look like they weigh a thing. And Kathy Coleman there is, does a great job of heaving them around like they weigh a ton. Where it's Will uh, Wesley just puts, puts them on his shoulders and he's fine. So this goes on for a while. And um, after they get off, of course, we see Grumpy sniffing. And Holly does some really, well, Kathy does some really fine physical comedy, struggling and sounding like she's struggling. These are really two, all of the whole cast is really good actors. And this episode features just the cast. And speaking of that, before we continue, please like, share, subscribe, vote in the poll if you're uh, watching on Spotify. And if you're uh, watching on YouTube, you can subscribe to that and also leave a comment. That would be great and share it. Uh, the YouTube video will be, uh, is always up the, the following day. 
And before we get along too far, I do have a housekeeping note. Next week, your humble agent is going on assignment to the wilds of Wyoming. And so we probably will have uh, a couple of different episodes, which will be uh, recorded up there. But they won't, we won't, probably won't be doing the a review of the 14th episode. Uh, we're going to put that off a week because when do you get to go on assignment or, and make an episode? So uh, let's get on with it here. We are a little, um, they've gotten to, they go to the crevasse with these two bundles of dinosaur nip. They throw them over and uh, about six minutes in here, if I can click it. Hey, Holly. What? Look. What do you think it is? Looks like a man. It is a man. Is he dead? I don't know. He's buried under a ton of rocks, Holly. Do you think he'd be alive? But What's the dummy doing here? What's important is who put it here. Come on, let's get it out of here and take a look at it. <laughs> so we have some ex exploration short, here. Short legs. Oh, I think they're knickers. What are knickers? They're pants that came down to here, and they wore socks from here on down. So this dummy's in great shape. The clothing is in great shape. You'd think they'd keep that and just wash it out. Obviously, time affects things differently here in... There's something in his pocket. They must have smelled the dinosaur nip. Come on, quick, behind the rocks. Well, guess who showed up? Both of them. Rick hears Alice and Grumpy screaming, and he's off, like a shot. And that, I think... We've got the dummy. Run for the rocks. I'll get the dummy. Well... Hurry, before they stop yelling at each other and decide to play with us. Don't worry, I'll be okay. Quick, dummy, what are you talking about? Here he comes now. What's this? We found hidden in some rocks. There's a book inside his pocket. What does it say? I don't know. Grumpy and Alice came before we had a chance to look at it. Well, they should both be at it for a while. Come on. Let's get this back to High Bluff and take a look. Okay. Come on. And commercial break here. So one has to assume that Grumpy and Alice have had many exchanges across the chasm or the crevasse. Just because, I mean, they're very, they're, they are the apex predators on each side. And as we'll find out in a little bit, um, they, well, they may be male and female. We don't know. Um, there's not a lot known about dinosaur physiology and uh, sexual assignment. But <laughs> Grumpy's obviously, as a, you know, Holly names them, and they, we assume they're boys and they're girls. So far, Alice is the only uh, other female, but we will get one in the third season, which we'll review in due course. Um, and I have a theory about this whole thing, but we'll get into that later on. But um, the seed has been planted. Grumpy and Alice are yelling at each other, and this dinosaur nip is the catalyst here, at least. I mean, it must grow all over the land of the lost if it's a fern, right? So uh, let's see what's inside this diary from this mysterious diary. What kind of book is it, Dad? It looks to me to be some kind of a journal or a diary. I can hardly read the writing. Wait a minute. Listen to this. I finally managed to teach the little furry monkey people a few words of the Christian language. I call them terrible lizard creatures, the Sleestacks after Major Joshua Sleestack. But, but them little fellas say Sarisa Taka. So this Major Sleestack <laughs> must have been some uh, grade A Nimrod. Uh, someone, well, or think of whatever word you'd like to say. A flibbledy flu, if you want to say family word. A petalk, if you want a Klingon word. But be that as it may, to name these horrible, well, you know, very aggressive reptiles after a, after a man, you, don't, you must not have liked him very much. 
or, or something akin. Hey, then he must be the one who wrote the warning about the slea stack on the pillar outside the lost city. Them giant thundering beasts won't give us a moment's peace. Dad, he said us. And he, call, he calls the slea stack terrible lizards and the dinosaurs thundering beasts. I mean, <laughs> this is the first time we've heard of this dinosaur nip, so... It seems a little convenient, but, you know, it's the MacGuffin to get them to find the du dummy and etc. And that's un it's all right. I mean, it works as a plot device, right? Oops, click. There's got to be two of them. There's some kind of plant the giant beasts like. He must mean dinosaur nip. Well, apparently. Let's see, it goes on here. Harry Potts has been gone for days now. Harry Potts must be the name of the other guy. It's too bad that this guy's name wasn't Ron. That would have been prescient in a way that would have been hilarious. Ron Weister or something like that. But alas, we just the closest we get is Harry Potts. This guy's name is, that's writing it is Peter Koenig. And I'm quite sure that Peter Koenig, even though no one has said this trivia, is named after um, Walter Koenig, who was you know wrote one of the previous episodes. Uh, I believe the Slee Stack God, and then, um, of course, was Chekhov in, in Star Trek, and somebody whose name I'm drawing a blank in Babylon 5. Uh, if you want to, leave it in the comments. I'd appreciate it. But back to the story here. And where are we? I'm here. I've taken off me clothes. Stuff them with that funny green stuff them monsters take so much delight in. And I've built me a roaring fire. I'll put me dummy in plain sight by the fire so that those infernal creatures will be thinking it's me. They'll not come close till the fire dies down. And by then, I should be across the crevice and into the cave where the pillars end. That's the lost city. Is there any more? It's just a little bit here. If I be right, fear not, ye poor suffering stranger, a reading this. I leave ye clues on rocks and on paper, as I have already done in me hand with this. That's it. So, this guy's running around in his under thing, undergarments, his long johns or sleepers, if you will, apparently, because his clothes, which are in good, they're dusty, but they're in good condition. No moths or anything. Apparently they have flies, though, which is a nice touch, as Holly had said. And um, did you grab yourself a big old uh, a grumpy size stack of wheat cakes? I hope so. I want to get all my traditions in here, don't you know? So uh, where do you think they're going? Um, oh, let's find out here. The other section is missing. Hey, the other half must be in the lost city. Dad, what do you think it meant when it said Harry Potts has been gone for days now? Gone where? I don't know, Holly. Do you think it could have meant Harry Potts escape from here? Well, there's only one way to find out. Yeah, find the other half of the diary in the lost city. Yeah, but the slea stack. This is the dormant season. Oh, I thought it was over. Dormant season? Well, that's the first time we've heard anything about that. So they do, it is, uh, it is their dormant season, as we'll find out. And then we get a nice shot, a process shot, green screen if you will, of the family. Hey, Dad, look, Grumpy's following us. Don't worry, he'll stop when he gets to the crevasse. Let's go. <laughs> or so Grumpy would have you believe. You do a really good job with this, these process shots and to make it look like they're in a, you know, a big place. Hey, look, Grumpy's still trying to follow us. <laughs> And to the awe and excitement of everyone watching. He's coming across the crevasse. Oh, Big Alice isn't going to like that. Boy, did she just say a mouthful. So, but everyone, uh, all of my friends, because we were watching this show regularly to the, we didn't watch anything else after we got into it. I mean, this show hooked you. And we got to find out some stuff here. Some mysteries were solved. Who named them the Slee Stack? Had there been other people here before who wrote the warnings? And then we, and the one thing we wanted was to see a fight between Alice and Grumpy. I mean, the two apex predators, an Allosaurus and a T Rex, who would win that fight? 
Uh, T-Rex has a far bigger mouth or a far deadlier mouth, a deadlier bite. But the Allosaurus was smaller slightly, although <laughs> as we're going to find out, Alice is actually bigger than Grumpy. And had longer arms and was probably faster. But we don't know. We'll never know. So, but this is about as good as we're going to. I don't know that we've ever seen a, we you know, seen a lame fight between the T-Rex and the Spinosaur. Uh, the only time in Jurassic Park where the T-Rex loses and isn't the hero. Yeah. T-Rex may be my spirit animal. But let's, uh, let's get on with this. We're just going to scooch forward here a couple of seconds. Beep, 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 beep. Uh, right to there. Here we go. There, uh, there's Grumpy. This is a lovely shot of Grumpy entering the Lost City. And it's framed where he walks into the between the arch that's in, standing out there. I mean, these special effects guys knew how to set something up. And now Alice is not happy. She's not happy when she's just yelling at him across the crevasse. And she's less happy. I suppose we should introduce them. I've never seen Alice so mad well, they're very territorial. Grumpy's invaded her turf. Uh-oh. Here we go. And the battle starts. And it starts. And it goes on for the next, like, ten minutes. Let's get out of here before Mixed in start. between, uh, well, uh, the family goes into the lost, um, the lost city there. So, we don't need to listen to them scrape. But just, you watch it and you think, this is a great fight. How come this has ever been done before? Time. What are those? Rocks to throw at a flea stack? No, honey. This is a cairn. A what? It's a form of a landmark. It's a sign to look here. It means there's something probably underneath. It does sound like he said it's a Karen who wants to see their manager. No, I'm not complaining. It's just fine. Well, you Hey, look! Look, Dad! It's the other half of the diary. Uh-oh, more mystery. There's a map here and... What does it say? More writing. I've finally found Harry Potts' trail. He come here, but he not come out. I can feel it in me bones. Told you not to use that time turner. There's a hole down there among them dead lizard men. It must mean the door with sea stack. That hole leads straight back to New England. <laughs> Harry Potts went in that hole and he went home. <sighs> Take heart, stranger. I leave you this map. I go to follow my best chum, Harry Potts. Dad, you oh, think he got out? Well, I don't know, Will, but he certainly didn't come back here. Well, where's the map say the hole is? Let me check here. Now we see the sleaze deck. And I'm still amazed that all of the sleaze deck, there's only three suits, and yet they had us convinced that there were, we saw hundreds at the same time. I would have sworn I saw at least 12. For an arrow. Like this? Yeah, that's it. The arrow points the hole in the wall. Hey, that must be it, the hole he wrote about. Hey, it's a pit. This sure doesn't look like the way home. No, it sure doesn't, honey. <laughs> oh, damn it! And there's a skeleton. Holly's had her share of seeing dead bodies or fake dead bodies. It's okay, honey. It's all right. It's the rest of the diary. <laughs> but what does it say? Suddenly the lava starts boiling. Wait a minute. I don't like this. That lava's beginning to rise. Do you think it'll get this high? I don't think so, Will. Doesn't look like it's done it in the past. It's getting a lot warmer, though. It feels pretty good. Uh-oh. Sleep stack. This is probably what brings them out of their dormancies. Come on, we've got to get out of here. Hurry! Hurry! Come on. Go. How on earth did they figure out that the sleep stack were in a dormant season? One of the nice touches here is Will's always got his canteen with him in case they need water for anything. So that's a really... Uh, a really nice touch there. I like that a lot. But I, did Enoch tell him about the dormant season? That doesn't make any sense now, does it? Okay. Will, you still have the crystals? Yeah, Dad. And on the 
count of three, we'll throw them together. One, two, three. Boom! So they temporarily blind and deafen Alice and Grumpy. Now I do have a slight thought about this, and they wander off, the two dinosaurs. Uh, and our heroes, are, the family makes it back to High Bluff, and then they're going to read some more of the... But let me have a... I have a slight... Uh, <laughs> A theory that uh, this is not the first time Grumpy and Alice have met. Be well, or maybe the maybe it is. But later on in the third season, we're introduced to Junior, what appears to be a baby Allosaurus, which would think, okay, somebody had to, some Alice had to meet somebody. And we've never seen any other, we don't see another T-Rex. We don't see another Allosaurus. Maybe this was sort of a, the first time they meet and they're like, well, but they decide, okay, she's, hey, Grumpy says, hey, baby, you're kind of cute with your green skin. Well, anyway, you get where I'm going here. Are you picking up what I'm laying down? Do you smell la 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 la? And I'm not going to finish it. What I'm cooking. So that's just the random things you think of when you're an adult and you don't think that they're just battling because... They just wandered off, and while they're fighting and biting, now they're not going to show blood and them tearing limbs off each other because it's a kid's show on Saturday morning. And I'm amazed that they got away with what they did in this show. But uh, maybe they're just, you know, like two cats, and they're playing, and they're, you know, they're roughhousing a little bit before they realize they like each other or something. I'm using cats because I don't, I don't know. Be that as it may, and I got off course quite a bit, let's finish the, wrap this up here. So I can save, save this. We didn't read the last half of the journal yet. Dun, dun, dun. I know. Dear poor unfortunate stranger, if ye be reading this by now, ye know this is not the way out of this miserable God-forsaken land. Go back. Leave these crawly caves. The slea stack awaken when the devil's cauldron bubbles up. I've stayed too long. They are awaiting for me to come out. Wherever the chum Harry Potts is, in heaven or hell, I'm hoping that he'll put in a good word for me. When I get there, dun, dun, at least dun. I'll be out of here. Peter Koenig, a private in General Washington's Revolutionary Army. Almost 200 years. Well, there's a lovely ending to the episode. It's pensive and our heroes are alive, but it's not very triumphant. Um, one thing I wish I'd have said at the beginning is if you're watching this on YouTube, please oh, at least watch a minute or two. It really helps the algorithm. That's a fancy word I've recently learned. Well, I haven't known what it was. But that is our episode for today, the 13th episode, which I don't know if they did it on pur purpose for the 13th, but there you go. So, agents, until our, until our next assignment, always remember that... Oh, wait, I had it right here, and now I don't. Dang it. Always remember, not all maps go somewhere. And not all who wander are lost, right? Blah, 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 blah. So, until our next assignment, this is X7 signing off. When I look all around, I can't believe the things I've found. Now I need to find my way. I'm lost, I'm lost. Living in the land of the Lord. Living in the land of the Lord.